The federal government has issued $258 billion worth of new debt since the start of the pandemic in March 2020. And because the budget was imbalanced before that, that's basically the cost of COVID. The states have issued another $110 billion of new debt as well. But they were forecasting deficits, so the cost of COVID to them is probably about half that. So total cost of COVID to the government so far, about $310 billion. But that's just to governments. There's lots of families who are well out of pocket as well. But guess how much federal and state government bonds the Reserve Bank has bought in the past 18 months using money specially printed for the purpose? $310 billion. What a coincidence. The Reserve Bank has printed the exact amount of money required to pay for the pandemic. It hasn't bought the bonds directly from the various governments, of course. That'd be far too efficient. It's bought them from the banks and pension funds, domestic and foreign, who bought them from the government to preserve the fiction that the independent central bank does not fund the government. What happened to the money? Well, $230 billion of it has been saved or used to pay off debt. So the federal government borrowed, the Reserve Bank printed, and we took all the money and paid off debt and saved. The total government debt in Australia, state and federal, is $1.5 trillion. Federal government debt, $850 billion, and 30% of that is owed to the Reserve Bank, which is owned by the federal government. So there's nothing unique about Australia in that. None of those central banks would admit to funding the government, even to pay for the pandemic. What they all say is that they're doing it to keep long-term interest rates down, along with the cash rate, which they directly control. And guess what that's done? So that's the other way that the citizens of the world are paying for the pandemic, through more expensive houses. Although, of course, if you've got one already, or better still, more than one, it's just a windfall.